Hi, I'm Karina and welcome to MommyWood.com. It's summer and it's time to hit the beach with the kids. So we're here with Ventura County lifeguard Derek Dohler who's going to give us a crash course on beach safety. Hi Derek, welcome to MommyWood.com. Thank you for being here with us today. Sure Karina, great to be here. Derek, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Derek Dohler. I'm a senior lifeguard here at Ventura County Lifeguards and uh, this is my eighth summer a lifeguarding. Been up and down California, hit a lot of beaches and uh, seen a lot of Seen a lot of sand out here, have a lot of fun. Now there are definitely some things that uh, we should look out for as parents when we bring our kids to the beach, right? Correct, yeah. What, are, what would you say is the number one thing that, that parents have to be aware of? Number one thing for parents, uh, not only parents but everyone, is the, our water conditions with our rip currents. That's what we, the majority of our job is, keeping people in, are away from the rip currents, and, and if they do get in trouble, we're helping them out and educating the public on how they can get out of situations like that. So can you explain to us what a rip current is? Sure, a rip current, basically, you know, all the waves come in, the water has to go back out, so it forms a channel, um, like a river that's heading back out to sea, and it'll, it'll come in with the current, it'll hit a hole and go back out, and people get caught in those rips, and uh, it'll get sucked out once they take their feet off the bottom, so. Now, how, how do you identify? Is it, is it pretty um, obvious when there's a rip? Yeah, well, a lot of the, you know, normal beachgoers won't recognize them, especially when they're in them. They won't understand why they're getting pulled out. But we as lifeguards, we can identify them. They're, um, you can see there's uh, more ripply, choppier water, maybe brown, murky. It kind of looks like water's rushing out to sea. You'll generally see them um, closer to jetties or um, areas where the bottom isn't as uh, shallow, maybe a little bit deeper, kind of offset. Any particular time of day or season that you see more rip currents than others? Well, the more surf we're going to get, the bigger the waves, uh, the heavier the rips are going to be and the harder they are going to pull. So uh, winter time, when we're not out here, a lot of times uh, the, the majority of the rips are heavier, pulling a lot harder. But out here in the summer, we do get some, some good ones and people do get in trouble, so we help them out. And so what, if somebody gets caught in a rip current, what should they know, what should they do? Basically, the first thing you should do if you get caught in a rip current is to not panic, okay? You don't want to fight against it. You want to almost let it have its way with you. It'll take you out to a certain point and where it'll stop. At this point, you want to swim parallel or paddle parallel to the shore, and you can get out of it and then come in. Rip currents are only so wide, so once you can get out from the clear, then you can make your way back in. But the number one thing is to not panic. Because if you panic, then you stand the chance you to You panic, you start struggling. Some people will ditch their boards or they'll, start, they'll get tired trying to swim in against the current. And uh, like you said, yeah, there's a possible, you know, struggling, drowning, yeah. And what's the best way to alert a lifeguard that you're in trouble? Uh, the best way, well, you know, as lifeguards, we're out here and we have a pretty good eye on everything is out, what's going on. So um, putting a hand up and, and calling for help is almost a last resort. We'll try to keep you out of a situation before it even happens. but. Um, um, that's the last resort, you know, but the, the best thing to do is preventative. Go talk to the lifeguard, find out the, the conditions, look, tell them, have them identify the rip currents to you so you know where not to go. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And um, you said that you're not here in the winter, so people should, should know that it's not very safe to swim when they're... Yeah, the you know, right? in the summer, people tend to feel a little bit safer in the winter. Out here especially, it's going to be more surfers and, you know, people are in their wetsuits, not really out here at the beach, but... Um, you know, in the winters, like you said, we're not here on duty, so it's always a good idea to swim near the lifeguard in the summer. Derek, can you explain some of what the different flags and signs mean on the beach? Sure, yeah. Um, when it gets crowded out here, we'll put up a what's called a surf swim sign, which will separate the surfers and the swimmers so that we're not having problems with people colliding or getting injured. Another thing we do do out here is first aid, uh, first responder for medical first aids. And we do have collisions, people come in getting cut, you know, getting hit by surfboards. So we put up flags and signs that'll help separate, make our job a little bit easier, give the people in the water kind of an object to see where they should and shouldn't go. And are there any flags, what are the particular flags for warnings that you shouldn't go in the water? Um, what like? well, we don't put up the black ball signs here like some beaches do. They have this, the different color flags that will show the different hazards as far as surf conditions and swell. Um, but generally at, at these beaches around here, it's pretty mellow all summer, so we don't have to um, keep people out of the water based on the size of the surf. Now, if someone in a different area sees a black flag, though, what does that mean? That's, a, that's, a, um, that's basically to notify you that the surf is um, a hazard that day. It's a, it's a swim at your own risk kind of, kind of thing. So 
Gotcha. But that's why the lifeguards are there too, and they help identify the situation. Okay. Now you mentioned surfboards. Now boogie boards, rafts. What what is safe to, to bring to the beach? Well, everyone brings everything out to the beach, and we don't, you know, we don't say what you can and can't take out there. But um, for the majority of people are on the boogie boards out here, and those are a lot of our rescues. People getting stuck in rip currents, laying on their boogie board, getting pulled out, and not sure how to get in. So. One thing that we always recommend is to have, if you're going to be on a boogie board, is to have fins, okay? It's a number one uh, identifier of someone that might get in trouble is someone on a boogie board without fins. So um, surfers, though, they don't have fins. They have the hard boards, long boards, soft boards, and uh, we do see rafts out here occasionally, people getting in the surf, but there's all kinds of different boards. Yeah. Right. And how close should parents stay to their kids? Uh, you know, it's always a great idea to keep an eye on your kids people come out here and they tend to think of us as babysitters and they'll just kind of let their kids do their thing and uh, that's not a good idea so a lot of the majority of the rescues we'll have will people just taking their eye off their kids you know I would if I were a parent I would stay you know keep an eye on my kid if they were out in the water I'd stay on the shore right there where I can see them um, also on the beach letting your kids wander around can also be a hazard um, there's plenty of things that can go wrong on the beach, not just in the water. For example, we have kids digging holes every day. They can get up to six to eight feet deep, and uh, definitely a potential hazard would be um, them collapsing on the kids and trapping them under the sand. So we keep an eye on that. Kids keep an eye on their parents, and we make sure that the kids fill in the holes at the end of the day um, so that it's not a problem. Also wandering into parking lots and into bathrooms and getting lost, I'm sure, are Correct, things yeah. that happen wandering away over to the parking lot, um, to the bathrooms. We have cars moving in and out all day. We've had kids get in trouble over there. So we keep an eye on not just what's in front of us, but what's all around us in the tower. Now, um, how common are stingrays out here in jellyfish? Here, it's seasonal, really. Some summers we'll have it more than others. Last summer, we did have a few more people getting tagged by stingrays. Uh, when I worked down in San Diego, it was on a daily basis. It's, really? with the, it's with the warmer water and the sandier conditions. There's a lot more down there than are up here, but they, there are a few up here as, as well as jellyfish. And like I said, with the warmer waters and the wor warmer currents and swells bring in different sea life like that. And is it pretty easy to see them in the water or is it pretty easy to get seen? It's, it's <laughs> not real easy to see them. You know, um, <clears throat> it depends on the visibility of the water as well. If it's clear, you might see them scattering around. So we always recommend that um, if it's kind of a season where people have been getting hit by stingrays, to shuffle your feet on the way out. Um, it'll kind of it'll kind of scare the stingrays, and they'll get out of there before you can get a chance to step on them. Now, what happens if you step on them and you get stung? If you step on a stingray and you get stung, not bit, people think they get bit. What happens? You step on a stingray and its tail has a barb in it, and it'll hit you either on the ankle or on the foot, and uh, put and it has venom in it too. So. It's not necessarily the pain from the hit, it's the pain from the venom after the fact. So you report it to a lifeguard and the best thing to do is to put your foot in as hot a water as you can stand to help drain the venom out and release it and reduce the swelling. And then the hot as well. And is that something that the lifeguards do? That's or not do something you... we can do because we don't have, we're not, um, you don't have hot water. we don't have as hot, that hot a water. So it's, it's basically get out, as, get out of here as soon as you can, get home and take care of it yourself. So. Got it. Yeah. Um, and just some other things in general, right? You should remember to stay hydrated and oh, your definitely. skin protected and all that. Skin protection, sunscreen is huge out here. People are getting burnt every day. Skin cancer is at a higher rate than it's ever been. And as, um, as well as hydration, those are two big things that we as lifeguards um, on a daily basis have to keep in mind. Uh, proper hydration, drinking water, fluids um, throughout the day consistently, and putting sunscreen on not just once in the morning, but um, you know, a few times a day, because the sun, the heat index is really high out here. So yeah. Yeah, and people don't realize that you can actually get very severe burns. People get burnt on every day, even on foggy days. People think that since the clouds are out there, I don't have to put sunscreen on. That's absolutely incorrect. So, 80% uh, of the sun can um, get through the clouds, and you can get just burnt just as bad. Yeah. Great. Was there anything else that you think that um, that we haven't covered? Uh, we know there's a lot there's a lot to talk about at the beach, but we've hit the basics here. Um, the best thing to keep in mind if you're with your kids is to keep an eye on them. Anything can happen. The weather changes daily. The water temperature changes daily. The water conditions change daily. Um, so you come out, talk to the lifeguard. We love to talk to people. We love to educate the public. That's our job. 
So um, keep in mind the rip currents, they're out there every day, and that's, that's something that we really want to pound into the public. So. So, Derek, what about uh, beach sea life? Do you ever see any of that out here? Yeah, we do. We get seals, sometimes dolphins. They do wash up on shore. Sometimes they come in on their own when they're not feeling good. If they're sick, they come in to try to get out of the, get out of the water for a while. And um, <clears throat> unfortunately, a lot of times they do die on the beach. And we'll, we will get seals that um, were killed out there by fishermen, and then they come in and wash up on shore. But the number one thing to keep in mind here is uh, if a live seal came in and to make sure to stay away from it okay they, they want to be left alone and they've been known to you know snap at people or even bite in a worst case scenario so little kids going out thinking that it's like a dog it's not right. there's a wild animal that needs to be respected and, and it wants its space so yeah. So never touch it, and if you if you see something, if you see something, lifeguard. report it to a lifeguard. Most of the times, we've got plenty of lifeguards on the beach to find them and see them coming in before they actually do. So um, notify a lifeguard, and we'll take care of it. A lot of times, we do bury them on the beach, and um, that's how we kind of take care of it. But as far as the live ones go, just stay away from them and give them their space. Okay, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. And then, what about sharks? Have you ever sharks. Seen sharks out here? <clears throat> Only thing we we don't actually see them. People do give us kind of uh, hey I've seen a shark out here <laughs> so we are not sure if if it's actually true or not but uh, if you know worst case scenario we did see a shark we would clear people out of the water um, just for precautions but um, generally out here it's pretty safe I'm sure they're out there I know they're out there and they're swimming around but we don't see them they're they're not too interested in what's going on here at least right here okay right, at right. this beach but you know you go down south and there's great white sightings up north in Santa Cruz they get them all the time so so how many rescues would you say that you've done in your eight years I've had a lot um, some better than others but um, I can't put a number on it I don't know because you know I'll come out you guys take off today we'll probably have some rescues so yeah. you know it it uh, there can be smaller ones minimal then we can have life save life saving rescues but for the most part we want to prevent it before it even happens so I guess the question would be how many prevents, prevents have you had? And I couldn't even count because we've had so many. That's our job is to intervene before something bad happens. Right. Okay. And people should really take it seriously. They should learn to respect the water and, and you know, to, to take it seriously that you can actually drown out there. Oh, yeah. People come out here thinking, not thinking. They right. come out right. here and they just don't have even consider. They just want to have a good time. And we want them to have a good time, but we want to do it as, as safe as, as possible. So. Well, thank you so much, Derek, for being sure. here with us today. It's yeah. a pleasure meeting you. Right, we'll see you on time. the beach. All right, sounds thank, good. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on MommyWood.com.